Good afternoon. Welcome on into another episode of From Day One. Let's rock and ride in Dominion with the courtroom. All right. Who else is there Judge, besides Mr. Uh, this gentleman was um, um, Mr. Knight and Mr. LeBron, Judge. And I know Mr. LeBron is approaching. I believe he has a PC affidavit in hand. Okay. Oh. Hello. Thank Hello. you. Hello. You're welcome. Uh, Okay. So did you have enough of time to read it? If I did, I would still like to state that the notice of dishonor stands. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I guess the notice of dishonor stands, whatever that means. Even though the the uh, complaint affidavit was provided to me uh, a little bit late, and I do want to uh, make a legal argument against this probable cause affidavit. Uh, I just want to ask the state a, a question. Uh, where did the where did these officers receive this information? Your Honor, I don't believe I'm under did any obligation to answer Mr. LeBron's question. Okay, sir. This is okay. how this. Let me just tell you how this works, so you know. Okay. Okay. I look at this affidavit filed by the police officer, and if it appears on its face that doesn't mean that you did, but just on its face, if it appears that you committed the crime of aggravated battery then I find probable cause. That doesn't mean today's not your trial day. No, no, I understand that completely. What I'm trying to get at is that uh, this, I, it doesn't seem like the officers actually witnessed anything. They just say that they made contact with me at a residence, which was, which uh, I don't know what, what had, that has to do with the alleged incident. Well, it's where they made contact with you to discuss the incident and probably where you committed the crime. And then it says also that, uh, it says that, they, they said that they said that that crime was actually committed, which I don't know how somebody could swear to that when they never saw it. Um, and I believe that this this complaint affidavit is mostly hearsay. So based on hearsay, if an officer swears to hearsay, does that create presumption great, or is that just one person saying something to another and then swearing to it? <laughs> does that create presumption great? <laughs> I just love it. Because I think that that's kind of. That, that makes this complaint affidavit moot and very ambiguous, and it puts me in a state of embarrassment where there's, where I'm... <laughs> this is my favorite line in the whole thing. Don't worry, there's more good stuff, but this puts me in a state of embarrassment. He's all up in his feelings about it now. ...face to go towards a trial with no actual facts, just presumptions and assumptions and hearsay. And to my, to my knowledge, which is very limited, you know, compared to yours. Uh, you got that right. I would say that, that this is a hearsay complaint report affidavit, and where is the proof? Presumption is there, may, maybe not great, and I, I would say that this is uh, defacing the court. To present this to the court, I think would, would really uh, do a great disservice to the court. And uh, furthermore, I would say that um, I know it's not my trial date or anything like that, but if I had evidence to, to uh, show that this victim is actually in fact lying and that this document that we were ready to put inside the court would be committing fraud on the court if I allowed it to go without objecting to it. Um, what would the court feel about that if I could? Ah, we're back to our feelings now. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe or the dogs get it. I've been given 24 hours to actually present uh, the court with evidence showing that the victim actually uh, falsified a, a, a police report and uh, would the, what would the court's position be on that? Because I, I think that this is all, you know, hearsay. And furthermore, I, I could show proof that the uh, alleged victims are lying. Okay, here's the if thing, we, sir. This is a non-adversarial hearing. So that means all the state has to do is present an affidavit and or they can bring live testimony into the court. And it's just to that and that alone that I look at. So, okay, well, I would say as my legal argument, excuse me, ma'am, I don't mean to cut you off. No, go least, ahead. Respectfully, I would say that this case has no corpus delicti, and if the, if the state's position is that it does have corpus delicti, then I would like the state to meet the elements of the crime right now to make their case, because I, I, I just don't think so. I don't okay. believe that this case is corpus delicti. Okay, I actually had to look that up to see what this guy's getting on about. Uh, you know, just, just throwing some Latin in there doesn't make this uh, bad argument any better. Okay, sir. Well, based on, I understand your arguments, and they are noted, and that doesn't mean that you're going to be found guilty of this. You might very well be found innocent, and I appreciate your arguments. 
but for purposes of probable cause, the court is going to find probable cause for aggravated battery. I love how he's surprised by defending a probable cause. I can tell you the one thing that I am going to do is I do it in all these aggravated battery cases, 90 out of 100. Um, yes, no contact with the victim with the initials JM and WMR. That means through third parties, social media, just stay away from them, okay? So as far as bond in this case, State, what are you requesting for bond? Uh, I believe Mr. LeBron's involvement is uh, more aggravating than his co-defendants, one. Two, uh, his criminal history, uh, 2009, fleeing and eluding law enforcement and a DUI, 2008, delivery of cocaine, he violated probation, 2008, resisting without violence, 2005, possession of Alprazolam, he was sentenced to just over 17 and a half months state prison, 2006, burglary of a structure, he received the same sentence, 2005, Grand Theft Auto, he received the same sentence, 2004, possession of cocaine, MDMA, possession of cannabis with intent to sell, resisting with violence, battery on a law enforcement officer, Violated probation, just over 17 and a half months state prison. 03, possession of Alprazolam, VOP, again, just over 17 and a half months Florida state prison. End of record, Judge. Okay, may I say something, Your Honor? Sure, let me yes. just pre premise it on this, okay? The state is sure. asking for, so I ordered the no contact order with those yes, two sir, alleged sir. victims, and the state is asking for a $15,000 bond. We actually set your co defendants at a $10,000 bond. So, what is your response to that? And I'll let you say your other arguments as well, too. Sure, absolutely. Uh, my response to that is what the state is stating is remote. And in the past, you know, according to the Fair Debt Collection Act, I don't think that they're, you know, you're supposed to go past seven years on any charge. <laughs> oh, this is priceless. Setting the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act in a, in a criminal case in, in Florida. Oh, it's just, it's too good. Per se. Um, so I would say that, that those charges when I was an adolescent are remote and in the past. And given, given the fact that I haven't gotten in trouble for a substantial amount of time, I would like to present that to the court. Um, I'm not found, I haven't been found guilty of this uh, allegation. And uh, I would say that I, I'm, I'm a, a staple in the community by doing a lot of community service. A lot on Amazon. I donate to my local women and children in distress. So I don't want the courts to shed a light just on on the allegations. Um, I do have a positive impact on the community, and I would like the court to consider lowering my bonds. Not only for the fact that I, I can't meet that financial obligation. Well, so right now, is, well, is right now, no bond at all. No, I know. Right now, there's no bond set at all. So we sure, have to set a bond that. today. Are you going to be able to afford the services of your own attorney, or do you plan on representing yourself? Oh, here it comes. Well, it's such a situation because I've hired attorneys in the past, and it was very disappointing to give them tens of thousands of dollars, and then they just want me to take a plea. So I've been disenfranchised from hiring an attorney, and I think the best bet is not me representing myself, but you know, representing the entity of Daniel LeBron as a attorney in fact. So however, the court might view that, you know. Just watch the judge's face coming up here. Uh, she's not even conscious of it, but it is priceless. I'm an administrator of Daniel LeBron. I'm, I'm not the actual entity. I just want to clear up the fact, okay? Okay. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to say, sir? <laughs> uh, there's a lot I'd like to say, but I'll just keep it brief and to the point. Um, well, make it sure it does, it's not about the facts of your case, okay? Okay, sure. Uh, if, the, if your honor would consider... Uh, maybe some kind of a ROR or some kind of stipulation with community service so that I could give back to the community while I'm going to uh, court. All right, here's the thing, sir. I mean, based on this probable cause affidavit, and I understand that, you know, you object to it, it says that the alleged victim in this case suffered a laceration to the back of the head, needing two staples and a broken middle finger and a ring finger and causing permanent disfigurement. Sure. <laughs> sure, there is that. I mean, these are very, uh, you know, serious allegations, and I'm not saying sure. you don't have a defense to them, but... Um, well, sure, if I'm, only if I may. Uh, normally someone break, breaking their middle finger and their pinky finger, just to me, common sense would tell me they might have punched something. I don't really know, but... 
to say that I caused permanent disfigurement, I think that's a little bit unreasonable. So that's why I'm a little bit confused with, with the complaint affidavit because it doesn't really make much sense to me. Well, I can kind of relate because you don't make much sense to me. And, you know, beyond that, I, I have evidence showing that that alleged injury with this alleged victim already pre-existed. I have evidence showing that that was a pre-existing injury so that he is now committing fraud on the court by introducing this probable cause affidavit when it's less than true. So how could anything else be relied on that he said to the officers and now the officers are swearing on today here in court? And if the court would just allow me to, to present that evidence, I would be more than happy to present that evidence in 24 hours. Well, I, I believe that this this hearing is for probable cause presumption great, and I'm just presumption great is argument. presumption great is just when you're being held no bond, sir. Um, stop using terms you don't understand. Okay. So well, that's no. you're you're not. That's not what we're doing here. That's a really high burden. This is what I'm going to do. This is in front of Judge Shear, who is your division judge. Yes, so um, I am going to set a bond today. And I am going to put you on yes, GPS sir. level two. And I am going to do the same amount of bond. This is without prejudice for you to go before your division judge at $10,000. All right. This is what you Let me ask you this. Why would yes, you want to apply for the services of the public defender? Because the public defender uh, presents a conflict because of their relationship with the state and the way money is paid out to the Broward uh, County court system and distributed. So in my, in my past, I feel like there has been a, excuse me, stop laughing, sir. Uh, in my past, I've experienced that there's been many. Well, no, I will not stop laughing. And, and, yeah, excuse me. So uh, I've experienced many conflicts in the past. And I just don't want that conflict to come over into a new case where I feel like I have to assert my rights at every step of the way. It's very important to me. Okay, I understand, sir. Um, I hear your argument. $10,000 bond, no contact, direct or indirect, with the two alleged victims, GPS level two. You can file a motion with your division judge. I'll do this without prejudice, okay, sir? Okay, and I'm reserving my rights without prejudice, UCC 1-308, in case I need to appeal, okay? Because That's... I don't agree necessarily, but I res respectfully, I will. <laughs> As if it matters if you agree. Yeah, move okay. okay, I understand, sir. Your rights right. are... Thank you very much for your time, and uh, have a good evening, okay? Okay, you too, Thank sir. You. Good luck to you. Well, there you have it. Uh, yet another horrible court appearance from the sovereign citizen community. Uh, this one was actually slightly more rational. Uh, about half of his stuff were just sort of bad pro se arguments. He thinks he can make all the arguments you make at trial or on a motion here, which he can't. Um, but then, then of course, he, he goes and, and dives right into the sovereign citizen stuff with, uh, with uh, presumption great. <laughs> And the uh, you know the UCC filing the, the the whole the whole works it's 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 good. Here at Law Talk we do a lot of videos answering common legal questions. We also do. We definitely appreciate you for that fun, Mikey. Uh, well, some people have been asking, of course, to go ahead and give some more hints about early on gameplay here in Dominion. And yes, that's how we started from day one back in the day. Uh, if you guys have any specific request as to what you'd like to hear about or what you'd like to see maybe to help you out going new, please either shoot it down in the comments below or over at our email, gchearwars at gmail.com. We'll be more than happy to address it and help you guys out. And again, help us get the 50,000 so we can get those red presents so we can send those out to all of you as well. Until tonight, this will bring the afternoon session to a close. Come on back tonight for more fun, more deal, and more, well, whoever we have, whether it be a soft set, a court appearance, or who knows what we may have tonight as we continue to march along here from day one. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight.